Welcome to Rugby Tonight, the best bits. We've got another great show lined up for you as we're joined in the studio by Victor Matfield. Yes, the Victor Matfield. Donica O'Callaghan and Britain's strongest man, Terry Hollands. And we have insight and analysis from Ben Kay. Yes, Ben Kay. Ugo Monia. Enjoy. I'm so glad to have you here. It's oh, really good to have you here. And a nice new... Fr I never saw these in Munster. Look at that. Was that a little Worcester gift for you? On the I thought you were on about um, the eyebrow hair. <laughs> I got this caught on my head in the match on Saturday, and when I was looking at it more, I've started to notice massive eyebrow hair. Maybe it's something that happens as you get older. So <laughs> yeah. that's a more concern to me than the eight stitches, I'll be completely honest. <laughs> Did you not know your nickname? No? It was no. Mono Brow, yeah. <laughs> 98 international caps, a phenomenal career with Ireland, and such a core part of that Irish team for so many years. Well, I'd imagine the Grand Slam, though, is, is your happiest memory, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose you, you always remember your first cap. Everyone will tell you, you know, uh, there's special moments in your in your life, and your first cap really is one that stands out. Uh, but uh, there's other days. The, the Grand Slam was great. The one the one that really stands out, and I hate to bring it up, was the Ireland England game for me in in Crow Park. It was just a special day that it, it kind of meant more than the sport itself of rugby. It was a, a massive moment for the country itself. I think it showed a maturity within the country, and you know it yourself how. Um, you know, for you know things that have gone on in the past, and 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 to leave 15 lads sorted out in a rugby pitch, I think it was a great way to show an oh, unbelievable maturity out of our country, and I thought it was great. It's the one that I personally took the most pride out of. Tell everyone at home in the studio that the Ducks. Oh. Yeah, look, Ben would know best. Um, when you go into these camps, you're. Um, you're broken into little groups, but the senior group and the management were sent away into a room to kind of plan out the year and get things together, and they left what we'd like to be known as the Muppets, guys that aren't involved in anything, to just get lost for the next 30 minutes. So uh, there was a beautiful little uh, lake where we were staying, and I grabbed a box of cornflakes and headed down and threw a few out, and these ducks started coming towards me. So threw another one out, and then all of a sudden I noticed I actually had about 12 ducks here you know, in, in my grasp where I, I could bring them wherever I want. So <laughs> management meeting was only around the corner, so I was, um, <laughs> managed to get them 30 metres up the way, opened the front door and just threw in the end of the box of cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> and the lads that were in there said, all they saw was the door open and 12 ducks just <laughs> <laughs> go for it and fly in. So. But like all things, there's always repercussions, and I ended up cleaning up duck poo for the rest of the day. <laughs> like. um, I don't know if Benny's favourite Donica moment oh, is a very no, serious I... one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, look, I was a huge uh, Baywatch fan growing up, and David Hasselhoff. <laughs> When, when no, he was no. coming to the end, I thought, who are we going to get to replace David Hasselhoff? And then one European Cup weekend, Donica stood up and... and oh, stop. And uh, <laughs> actually took part in a line-out. It just won't go away. Is that... Uh, <laughs> oh. I love the two guys. Oh. Look at the lads on <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love them going, I'm not lifting him. There's no way I'm lifting him. <laughs> uh, you know, there's moments in your life that you would go back and raise if you could. That is absolutely top of the list. Yeah. I can't believe you're here. Oh, my God, it's Victor Matfield <laughs> in our studio. Fantastic. OK, I'll stop that. I'm embarrassing myself. Um, great to have you here. And it's the first ever time you've had to play rugby around Christmas since you move over to the Northampton Saints. How's it been for you? Yeah, it's a bit different. Uh, normally, this time of year, we're on the beach in the sun. Uh, <laughs> Nice thing is, I got a Christmas jumper now. I never had one before. I thought I'll never have one, but um, I've got a nice elfy green one, so um, looking good in it. Is that seriously the highlight of your move to England? <laughs> <laughs> I think for my kids, that is. <laughs> um, your scroll is unbelievable. Everything you've achieved in your career, absolutely unbelievable, and, and where you've played and who you've played with. But what, what is your standout moment when you look across? all those years. I can't help fawning over the man, Hugo. Give me a break. Your scroll is so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> your gorgeous looks. Oh, my gosh, you're here. I love it. Don't mind them. It's just you uh, and me. Okay. And <laughs> um, what stands out for you? I think every time you win a title stands out, but, of course, the World Cup was very special in 2007, going to France, uh, winning the Cup against England, and, um, yeah, going back home and see what it means to the country. Okay. I think... Uh, in South Africa, the team's got extra responsibility, almost giving hope to the country. Everyone looks up to the team. So um, getting back to South Africa and see what it meant to everyone was very special. And then 2009 really stands out as a year where uh, we beat the British and Irish Lions. We went on to uh, 
win the Tri Nations back then. And uh, I was lucky enough to beat the All Blacks four times in one year. So three times with the Springboks, and uh, was fortunate enough to captain the Barbarians to beat them as well at the end of your tour. One of the things I, I really like, I'm going to ask you to tell me the story, is that one of your favourite memories about Bucky's Botha, your old partner in crime, uh, and what he said to Mike Phillips during a game. <laughs> yeah, we, did you play that yeah. game? Yeah, we yeah, played, and um, at some stage, Bucky's was lying on the ground, and Mike Phillips came up to him and said, Listen, are you in PSP on steroids or what? And Bucky's just looked at him and like, pulled him closer. I love your blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what did he get for that? No, 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 no. Um, you talk about Backies, and when I think about you know, that South Africa team, yourself and Backies, that partnership, and then of Ireland, yourself and Paul O'Connell, and Benny, yourself and Jono, and it's, it's one of the few areas of a team where you get these partnerships that just last for so, so long. And of course, there's a, there's a, a balance there, isn't there? There's the, there's the athlete, the, the, the man with skill and a bit of pace, and then there's the absolute meathead. Um, <laughs> talking through your, your, your which, 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 which one were you? Which one were you? If you look at the three of us, you can see who's the meathead. It's funny. If you, yeah, Bucky's always had scars as well. So um, yeah, I think what's nice about the second row is. You can have weaknesses, and someone next to you can help you with those weaknesses, and that's what's made Bucky's and myself. It's probably the things that I weren't very good at, Bucky's were very good at. Uh, I didn't like to go into rucks. Bucky loved, Bucky's just loves to go into rucks. And then uh, I think we were playing in probably our 12th year together, and when we went down in scrums, I still have to tell Bucky's, Bucky's the second ruck, you must do that. Just say, thanks, Matty, and you just do it. So, um, so he's the yeah. meathead. Basically. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that. You but you see me, he might fly over tonight. So, um, no, but I just think um, playing against these boys as well, it's about combinations. And um, play against Ben and Jono when I was a youngster. Uh, I was a youngster at some stage. <laughs> so, so was I. Uh, it was just fantastic. I think the two of them set the standards of uh, locking combinations and it was great to go up against them and then you know, to play for years against these two as well. We're going to do a little demo now on the big hit. People always wonder how you make the big hit. And it's not just the most powerful guys hitting you head on. It's all about timing and actually catching the, uh, the ball carrier how you want him when he's, when he's off guard. Of course, yeah, it's dominating that collision and often, like you just said there, is catching people out of their blind side. If I'm just a ball carrier, I'm focusing on trying to get over that gain line like we saw Johnny Williams doing, which means I've probably taken my eye off the defender. Fugo starts jogging towards. He's now, stop there, he's now looking at the ball, so he can't see where I'm coming from. As he go, keeps going, I know he's going to get the ball now. As it's released, I can accellerate. And what I'm trying to do, probably because I know I'm going to win this collision, I would have started off hitting down here. Now I know I can go a bit higher and go for the big shot. Because where he's most vulnerable, he want, he's strongest running on this plane. If I knock him off that plane, lift his feet up, hit him high above his centre of gravity, hopefully his feet are just going to come up and I completely win the collision. If I hit him head on, it's going to be a big collision, but it's probably going to end up hurting us both the same and it's not going to look as... It's not going to be the one that gets the crowd going. No, you know, you're absolutely right. Whenever you get the defender on the outside and I'm focusing on this ball, he's out of vision, I'm focusing on that. There's only going to be one winner there. Goody's making a comeback. I think we should right. maybe, maybe put a bit this of... This could be the end of me, go I'll So we're going to run fa fairly reasonable pace. OK, yeah, take, take him off, take him off. Ready, so I get the timing off there as the ball comes in. <laughs> <laughs> See, I said I wouldn't do it that hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's all... If you think about the, the, the best tacklers in the world there have ever been, Johnny Wilkinson, not that big. He just gets the timing right, catches the guy off guard while he's thinking maybe a bit upright, trying to catch the ball, and just puts that shot through on the diagonal, back against <laughs> the way he wants to go. <laughs> Great. It's time for the beast. We got some serious hit. Thank you, yes, we got some serious hitters in the studio tonight. Uh, just to give you an idea what's been going on, Ashley Johnson, the big old Wasps unit, 491 is what he's scored. Phil Dowson there, 497. Thomas the Tank, 523. Currently, the record holder, though, is Adam Jones, now of Harlequins. What a hit, 558. Crouch, touch, engage. Come on, drive it, help me. Skinny jeans are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> They're killing all of us, to be fair. Uh, right. Dodica, how did you fare against the beast? I can tell you, you got... Wow! 
six, two, nine. nine. Top of the table. Yeah, cheers, guys. <laughs> I feel big in. Crouch, touch, engage. How are you feeling? I'm done. Are you done? <laughs> okay, come down here, we'll have a look at this score. It's got to be Mark Shul. I can tell you the score to beat is 6 2 9. You've got yourself. That's a meet it. Five, nine, Five, one. Nine, one. Still, still, second best score ever. I'm not going to argue. Go when you want. <laughs> one, two, three, go! <laughs> He's broken the machine. That's not Santa. Santa, you're going to have to buy yourself, get yourself a new, get the elves to make a new microphone. <laughs> I genuinely um, think he's broken the machine. Let's, um, it was certainly the most impressive hit. Is it the biggest score yet? Santa, it is a... Oh. 5-3-3. Three, three. <laughs> <laughs> You, of course, have played a bit of rugby. Uh, you played your rugby with Harlequins, is that right? Yeah, a long, long time ago now. How long ago was that? What, what um, age group did you play up to? I, I played under-21s and a few second-team games, so this was, well, 15 years ago. Long what, time ago. What position were you? Well, I, I sort of moved between second row and number eight at the time, but I was about 12, 13 stone lighter then, so... What, what weight are you coming in at now? Um, I'm around about 31 stone at the moment. Just the 31, yeah. 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 A little yeah. bit too heavy for me, but yeah. I'd like to be sort of back down to about 28. Just down to the 20 yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. would you eat about Craig's weight for lunch? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Let's talk about 2007 when you became world's strongest man. Um, everyone was so excited about it because it's an incredible competition and it really kind of caught the imagination that year. What are your memories of it? Um, I mean, I actually won Britain's strongest man. I was third at world's strongest Sorry, man. Britain's no, strong. that's okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was great memories. Um, that was really sort of two years into my strongman career and I really felt like I was building to, towards some, something really good. And, I mean, I've had a great career, so I've 10 years of competing at World's Strongest Man and been top 10 in the world nine times, so it's been a fairly decent career. How do you train for it? Because you can't, like, kind of go home, right, tonight I'm going to do the truck and boat. I mean, how, how do you prep for that? Um, I mean, truck pool was actually one of my best events and I never actually trained it at all. Um, just once I learned the technique, it's just getting stronger in the gym and... Just, just generally getting stronger and better condition for that event. And, um, yeah, just, I mean, once you not understand how to do it, you don't need to do it every week. A tug of war of legends. Wait till I tell you. Teams, Benny. Bit this way. Let's make it Come fair. Here. Take the strain. Go! <laughs> That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Rugby Tonight, the best bits, and don't forget to hit subscribe. See you next time.